The purpose of this video is to discuss cervical headgear delivery on your patient. The headgear inner bow is the only thing I can demonstrate on this patient because my patient does not have a neck to put the strap on to adjust the force axis. This will be covered in your seminar by your instructor in session 7 and also in session 4. So the first step is to have bands fitted on your upper molar of your patient with headgear tubes. That's what you see right there. That's the 045 headgear tube. And you have to know if you're using a cervical headgear, this is the face bow for cervical, versus a high pull headgear, and this is the bow for a high pull. And you know the difference because, because of a high pull, the inner bow is about the same length as the outer bow. And in a cervical headgear, the inner bow is much shorter than the outer bow. So the next step is to determine the size of the bow that you need that you will order from Progressive Dental Supply. Take your handy plastic ruler from Progressive, measure from the mesial of the tube to the midline over the brackets or whatever you have in there. Let's pretend we have some brackets and this would be a size 3. You can see that on the midline right there. You go to your supply drawer and lo and behold you don't have a three you only have a number four well that still works it's no problem as long as the inner bow doesn't touch the teeth of the brackets you will be fine the bow comes with a midline mark on the superior aspect you can see that dash right there and in the pos system these bumps called the u-loops always go up or superiorly or gingivally and because this type of is upside down up is down into the tabletop toward you. So I have made a Sharpie mark on there to show you the midline to demonstrate the fitting of the inner bow or the face bow in this video. So after you remove it from the package, the first thing I like to do is using the light wire plier, which you have right there, I like to bend the U-loops, that's what these things are called, out at about 15 to 20 degrees. And this is not measured by anything. It's just a random outbend. And now you can see them pointing outward. This will clear any brackets that you have on the upper second bicuspids. And I normally do this on every delivery. Next, you will insert one side only. Notice how this side is not inserted and this side is. And then carefully observe where the midline mark falls on the middle of the patient. You can do this on the superior aspect clinically, and that's what you see right here. Or in this demonstration, we're going to do it on the inferior aspect because it's easier for you to see. So here I know that the midline mark needs to move to my left, to my left. So an easy way to remember this is to remove the face bow, put the light wire plier on the straight wire section right distal to the u-loop so you don't distort the tube and push this midline so it goes to my left to my left that way I don't have to think about what I'm going to do I can just do it quickly and efficiently reinsert this and you can see the midline is still not quite in the midline of the arch so I need to move it more to the left more to the left so I will put the plier back on the mark, hold it firmly, and push this more to my left. And now I'm almost there, almost there. So one more tiny adjustment. And what you're doing right now is adjusting the headgear to compensate for any molar rotation that you have in the tubes any molar rotations that you have in the tubes. Sometimes it takes a utility arch or some kind of a device like a TPA to make the molars derotate enough. So now you can see that the middle of the arch is at the middle of the face bow. So consider the patient right side molar completed. Now we're going to remove the face bow and insert it in the other side and see what kind of a toe in toe out adjustment are needed here. So you can see the midline needs to move to my right. I'm going to hold this side, move that to my right just a little bit because this side was not off as much as the other side. 
hold this right here and whoops and move this to my right and now only insert that one side and now you can see that looks pretty good All right the middle is in the middle let's check the other side and the middle is in the middle and it makes sense that if each side fits independently then they should fit together I would also like to make a disclaimer here that this is not POS philosophy what I'm discussing here this is how I do my headgear delivery so again it's Jeff Taylor talking not POS Next, I want you to consider what the expansion is in the arch, and you can see that right here on patient right side. It is about six millimeters away from the tube. The desired amount of expansion is only one to two millimeters. The diameter of that wire right there that you're looking at is a 045. One millimeter is 40 thousandths of an inch, so approximately 45 is close to 40, so it's one millimeter. So you need that wire to be one millimeter away from that tube, or I should say one wire width. So this is very simple. Simply compress this inner bow until you have one wire width away. And I compress too much. So let's expand it back out. Put this back in. And there you go. One millimeter away from the tube. And if everything works out nicely, when you insert this, it will go in as smooth as glass, as smooth as glass. And it might be a little overexpanded, so let me compress this just a bit more. And when I do this delivery at the patient, and I show the patient, and I say, can you feel how there was zero force when this went in that molar tube? And he says, yes. And I say, that's exactly how you should feel the same thing. So now when we remove the face bow or the patient removes the face bow, you want to compress the U-loop slightly. That's what I'm doing here. And then roll one side out and then gently walk the other side out smooth as glass. The reason that headgear tubes, excuse me, headgear bands are debonded for or debanded from the tooth is the patient reaches in and jerks it out of the patient's mouth that's why they knock the bands off but done correctly with a gentle compression like that it should be just as smooth as glass next let's discuss this option of how does the headgear fit the arch is it sitting up or is it sitting below the lip putting pressure on there you want this point to exit right at the commissure of the lips and this is important for patient comfort because you expect him to sleep in this and work in this and so forth so you can always adjust that. You can adjust that by bending these two ends up or down respectively. And hopefully your instructor will go over that in the class related to the headgear fitting. So again, one side is going to be easy to insert and the other side eh, might have some slight resistance to it. You will find out which side is better. And in this example, patient right side is far easier and smoother to insert and remove so that is the side you'll have him insert last insert this one first for my students who are current POS graduates and for all students who aren't listening to the audio they're only watching the video the headgear instructional and theory slides can be found in your notebook in case 979 or session 4 for my graduate students these images are found in your seminar 5 notebook for how to manage the uh, force modules and I can't show you a force module um, and a headgear excuse me a neck strap delivery because I don't have a neck on my type it on but I can show you what a force module looks like and these come in two fashions or two strengths one is light and one is heavy you can read that right there and the way the plastic injection molding works they're going to aim the arrow at one side or the other and you know this yo-yo effect right here anything past the first 20 millimeters that's just under an inch delivers the force advertised and the force advertised for a light is 12 ounce and for a heavy is 24 ounce the next strap this is an older version of course is pink the new ones are black and the next strap can go on in 
this position or it could go on in this position based on the size of the patient you know the bigger the patient the longer it is as long as you have anything past a 20 millimeter pull a 20 millimeter pull will deliver the force stated so for instance here we'll put that ruler at 10 so 10 plus 20 is 30 so anything past that 30 mark will deliver the force advertised and that's just about an inch so it's super easy to do and you can see how the force module comes off of that and it can go on multiple spots our new neck straps only have two options one at the end and one inside these older ones had many options for the force delivery so that's the way the neck strap works and you can look in your uh, notebook about how to do the um, force axis delivery but I'll mention it here that the let me remove this the line of force should go right through the center of resistance of the upper molar which is right there and you can simply do that by transferring that point out to the patient's cheek and we'll describe that in the seminar how to do that with a face bow and then you adjust the outer bow by bending it approximately right here with a heavy duty face bow plier to make this go up or down up or down to make the string line go through the dot and remember that it's not the metal of the outer bow of the face bow, it's the string line going through the dot. And I will say that almost without exception, 99% of the time, the outer bow will be bent up to make that force axis be correct. All right, I hope this has been educational, informative, and remember headgear delivery should only be about a five minute experience. No more than that, so do not fret about headgear delivery docs.